On today's episode of Let's Talk Drones, we'll be setting up a simple waypoint mission to demonstrate the power of autonomous flight in the DJI Mini 4 Pro. I've already played with this just a little bit. I've gotten acclimated to it, and I gotta tell you, there's a lot of use case for this, and it makes this machine even more capable than we even realized at face value. Enough wasting time, let's talk drones. What's up? It's Chris, the Drone Geek, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Drones. Let's Talk Drones is brought to you by The Droning Company, the number one online resource for commercial remote pilots based in the United States. Make sure you check them out online at thedroningcompany.com and across all major social media platforms. We've got the Mini 4 Pro in the air. I'm going to go ahead and start recording the screen here on the controller. The drone's telemetry will actually program how high it needs to be, how the drone is gonna be headed in terms of its compass direction, and then also the camera gimbal tilt. It's also going to read that and know exactly how the camera should be positioned when it executes its various objectives through the waypoint. We're gonna keep things really simple here. Uh, I was going to fly through the trees, but there is an issue with the drone when it comes to the waypoints mission that I think you should be aware of. When you're setting this up, if the drone did text an obstacle in front of it, even if you've got obstacle avoidance set up for avoid or bypass or break, it will still not conduct the waypoint mission if there's an obstacle in front of it. It will pause it and then you can't continue until the obstacle has been cleared. It's important to know that when you're making plans for a waypoint mission. So originally, like I said, we were going to be weaving through the trees here and then going up, we were going to be taking some pictures of the city of Williamsport. But just to get the point across to you, I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to put this up above the canopy of the trees. We're going to set up our waypoint mission and then we're going to bring it back and we'll talk a little bit about how you could use this type of technology in an everyday setting, whether it's commercially, recreationally, whatever the case may be. There's a lot of utility for this particular functionality on this drone. So let's go ahead. We'll get the Mini 4 Pro up in the air. I'll find a gap here in the tree canopy. There we go. And we'll face towards the city of Williamsport. I'm here in Brandon Park. I felt this would be a really good place to do a video. I usually do a lot of my in the field tests in my hometown of Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania. I thought let's change it up a little bit tonight and let's do something a little bit different. Drive down the road and see what Williamsport has to offer. So if we wanna add a waypoint where we're at, we'll go ahead and we'll start with this angle right here with this position of the drone. We'll press our C1 button. And you'll see there that adds a waypoint at the bottom of the screen in that menu. So we'll go ahead and we'll just push forward here. We'll fly over the campus of Lycoming College. And we'll actually also yaw the drone to the right a bit. And we'll add another waypoint right here. Okay, so we've added two waypoints. Now we're gonna go ahead and bring the elevation up a bit and we'll tilt the angle of the camera down. Okay, we'll add a waypoint there. And then we'll add one more waypoint and you'll understand why we're not moving the drone but adding a waypoint here in just one moment. So we'll add a waypoint there. And then what we'll also do is we will angle the camera down and we will come over to the quad, at least one of the quads. I don't know how many there are. Now let's go over actually to the main campus of Lycoming College. This is a really cool photo of their, one of their buildings in the middle of campus. And we will angle the camera, not all the way down to 90 degrees, but we will angle it down so we get a cool parallax effect here. We'll center the building as best we can and we'll add a waypoint here and another waypoint here. Okay, now what we'll do is we will bring it home. And as you'll see on the screen, one thing I really like that they brought to the newer DJI drones is indicating the home point on the RC2. You had this with the Avada and other DJI FPV drones where in your goggles, you could actually see the letter H to indicate where the home point was. And obviously that's set up that way because with an FPV drone, you don't have access to a map to be able to see the drone on the rope feature that they have to bring it back to you safely. So instead they had to add the H so that you could see where the home point was and bring your drone back Back safely. They've done it here on the controller too, which saves me having to pull the map up all the time, which is a really, really nice feature. 
So we'll bring the drone over. We'll go ahead and take a top-down photo of the intersection here in Brandon Park's entrance. Set it there. And then we'll drop elevation down into this gap. There's a squirrel crossing the road if you look closely enough. Well, he's actually walking right down the middle of the road, which isn't safe. So we'll bring this drone down in elevation. We'll go ahead and we'll turn it into the larger gap here. And we will set a waypoint. And then we will come around here. And this may get interrupted because of that obstacle avoidance feature that I was telling you about, but you'll at least get to see what it looks like up in the air. And we'll just see how intuitive the drone can be in tighter quarters. And then one last waypoint here and another one, which we'll talk about in a second. Now you may be asking yourself, why did you set two waypoints in certain locations without making any, any positional changes to the drone? And the reason for that is I want to be very deliberate. I want the drone to go to a waypoint. I want it to stop and then I want it to start with an action that I program it to do. So if we come down here to, oh, I can move that, that's sweet. Okay, uh, if we come down here to the bottom on waypoint one, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start recording on waypoint one. So once it gets to waypoint one up in the air, which we programmed at the beginning of our mission, at that point, it'll start recording video. And then the rest of the mission up to a certain point, I think once it takes a photo, it'll actually stop. Uh, but up until that point, it will record everything it's doing. It may surprise us and do both, but I doubt that. So then we'll come to waypoint three. We're gonna set it to take a photo. Or was that waypoint four? It's waypoint four. So we're gonna go back to waypoint three and we're gonna press no action, none. And we're gonna go to waypoint four. And this is where waypoint four, we're gonna take a photo. We'll go to waypoint six, which is that angled down photo of the building on like coming colleges campus. We're gonna take a photo there. And then we're gonna go to waypoint eight. We'll take another photo of the top down of the intersection here at Brandon Park's entrance. Then at waypoint nine, we're gonna start recording again. And then at waypoint 11, we're gonna stop. We're gonna, no, we'll continue recording. No, we'll stop recording because then we're gonna land the drone and talk about what it did. Sorry for my indecisiveness. Okay, so we've got our waypoint set. The drone knows what it needs to do. So what I'm gonna do to avoid any more mishaps here, I'm gonna position the drone above the tree canopy slightly. I'm not gonna go all the way up just because I'd want it to do some of the work on its own. We're ready to get started. So what we'll do is we'll press next and you'll see there's one more menu here on the controller screen. We have our global speed, which is going to be the speed at which the drone moves from waypoint to waypoint. I'm gonna set this since we're above the tree canopy a little bit higher for most of the mission anyway, to about eight miles an hour. At the end of the flight, we do want the drone to land, so that's what we'll have it programmed to do. If it loses signal, which it won't, we're pretty close to where it's going to go, uh, we're gonna have it return to home automatically, and then at that point, we'll take over once it comes back into range. And then the starting point is waypoint one, which is almost directly above us at this point. So, we're ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and press go on the controller. And you'll see the drone is going to ascend to its starting position. And I apologize in advance for the poor camera quality on some of the footage you're gonna see here. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about that in the camera review for this drone, which will be coming up in just a few days. It's important to note that uh, the video functionality on this is somewhat limited without ND filters. But again, we'll talk about that in a different video. So you'll see with the first waypoint, we went ahead and we started recording to the SD cord card that is on board on the drone. Now we're moving to our next waypoint and the drone is adjusting that yaw that I did to the right to get the center city of Williamsport more in focus or downtown Williamsport more in focus in the center of the frame. It's, it's actually making that adjustment very gradually as we go. I think towards the end of when I set the waypoint up, I sort of did it, not abruptly, but with a little bit more aggression behind it. This is very easily easing into that transition from facing one way to slightly turning to the right or yawing to the right. 
So we are still between waypoint one and two. And you can note that by looking at the menu at the bottom of the controller screen, it says one of 11. So that means we haven't gotten past waypoint two yet. When we get to waypoint two and we execute the action that we have programmed for waypoint two, that's when you're going to see that change to two of 11 and it will continue to progress on through the mission. Another interesting piece of telemetry or data that you can take notice to is the number of feet traveled in the entire mission. Uh, you'll see right now we're approaching 1,000 feet out of 4,214 feet in our total mission. And it also gives you a timer for how long the mission should take the drone to conduct and complete. So we've reached waypoint number two. We're going to pitch the camera down a little bit. We're gonna stop recording because now we're gonna take a photo. The drone's doing it automatically. And now we're gonna continue on to waypoint four. So waypoint two was the position waypoint. Waypoint three was the photo waypoint. So it conducted and completed waypoint three. And now we're headed over to waypoint four, which is where we got to a position above that building on the college's campus. And then the camera should tilt down and take a photo on waypoint five. Everything's coming into frame nicely. I think one of the big things that I learned, I'm not gonna to touch the controller because sometimes DJI is a little bit funny about interfacing with the UI um, while it's in an automated mission, so I don't wanna screw this up. But I, one of the things I learned is there's a little indicator that tells me about the screen recording length, whether it's happening, how long I've been recording. I didn't know that you could move that around on the screen. So I learned something new today as well. So we are squaring up with that building. Not quite to where we wanna be yet, but it looks like it's going to be pretty darn accurate with where we set it up originally. Okay, it's a little off center. That's something important to note. Maybe you wanna be even more deliberate and set two waypoints so that it pauses in position and takes its photo. The other thing you wanna notice here is as we're going, it's actually not adjusting the yaw as quickly as it should. I'll have to take a look to see if there's anything that we need to change to make that happen. And I can do a future video update to make it a little bit more deliberate in its movements, but you'll see it's just sort of pandering the camera around and it's not really focused on any particular flight path. Um, let's go ahead. Oh boy, I don't know if I want to do this, but I'm no, I'm not going to touch it. We'll let it do its thing and we'll talk about it. I suppose now that I'm thinking about it, how we could mitigate this and change it so that it is acting more deliberately because right now what it's doing is it's adjusting for that top-down photo of the intersection here just to my left. Uh, what we could do is on one of our waypoints that's directional, we can actually set the camera pitch and angle and the orientation, the, the heading of the drone so that it flies appropriately. Right now it's like rolling to the left. So it's not really faced in the direction that it's flying which for the Mini 4 Pro isn't a huge problem because it does have omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. Obviously that's got its limitations, uh, but it, it's not faced in the direction that it's supposed to be going, which means we are flying relatively blind right now. But again, I have faith in the software. I have faith in the drone and the technology, and I think we're gonna be okay. The only part that actually is sketching me out a little bit is dropping it down low and bringing it in here. But after seeing how it works, how it will refuse to work if an obstacle is in the way to begin a waypoint mission, it makes me feel better about conducting it below the tree canopy. So I can hear the drone coming. We are getting close to where we are supposed to be for this next waypoint. There's our home point. And there we are. Hello. Waving up to the camera. It's doing its thing. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to take a top-down photo of this intersection, which I think will actually be pretty nice, even though it's not really purposed any particular way. Okay, now this is the moment of truth and where I may need to take over.
is how will the drone do avoiding this tree? It did relatively well, I have to say. Uh, I'm actually impressed with how well that did. Okay, I don't wanna jinx it though, because we are coming into some Okay, so there you go. You got to see an example of what I was talking about with the obstacle waypoint, is if there's something in the way, the drone will actually suspend the mission rather than try to get around the obstacle on its own. So what we'll do is we'll just bring it in here. It did record, it did do what it was supposed to do that way, started recording a video. And there we are. Hey buddy, how'd it go? Okay. So you got to see waypoints in action with the DJI Mini 4 Pro. I don't know if you can see him, if he's in frame or not. Should be at this point. You got to see waypoints with the DJI Mini 4 Pro. So what we're gonna talk about a little bit here is how this could be used in a real world setting. Whether you're flying commercially or recreationally, there are a variety of different ways that you could use this type of technology. So we're not dealing with the beeping of the controller. I'm gonna land this and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so let's talk about how you could use waypoints with the DJI Mini 4 Pro. I'm not gonna pretend like I know everything about every piece of mapping and modeling software there is out there. I will say that in recent history, DJI has made it very difficult to interface consumer drones with mapping software. They're kind of pushing that audience into buying an enterprise product. So I'm not gonna pretend like this is going to be something you can jump out and use something like Pix4D or Drone Deploy immediately with. However, what I will say is, if there are softwares out there that will allow you to use the data and the telemetry collected by the Mini 4 Pro in conjunction with the images that it's collecting, you could very feasibly set up a mapping business with your Mini 4 Pro. Now, the level of accuracy on those maps is going to be questionable to some degree. So if you need something that needs a very fine level of precision, the Mini 4 Pro probably won't be the drone for you. But if you're just putting something together that can be sort of close, but not quite right on, it might be perfect for that setting. You can also use it for the same purpose for modeling. If we wanted to fly around one of these trees and model this tree and create a 3D rendering of the tree, we could do that. Now, how accurate that modeling would be, I can't really say. I can't also say if there's any 3D modeling software out there like Drone Deploy or something similar that will allow you to use the data collected by the Mini 4 Pro along with the images you collect and capture of the structures that you're modeling. But what I am going to say is the Waypoints feature allows you to take control of the drone in a way that you couldn't before with the Mini series and apply it professionally. Now I'll say this. Is this perfect? No, it's not. Obviously, the obstacle avoidance thing is a little bit odd. Uh, I understand why it's programmed that way. Obviously, DJI doesn't want your drone to run into a tree while on a waypoint path. It wants to take that liability out of the equation. But the fact of the matter is, DJI probably should have programmed it in a way that the drone uses its new obstacle avoidance sensors to be able to avoid those obstacles and trees and objects while conducting a waypoint mission. What did you think of the functionality of the waypoints on the Mini 4 Pro? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up icon down below. It helps me out a lot, helps get this video out into the algorithm to more viewers like yourself. If you love drone content made by drones, about drones, and for drone pilots, well, my friends, this is the channel for you. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're at it, hit the bell icon. You'll get a notification every time I post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris, the Drone Geek, and I am out of here. See ya. Yo, yo, what you say? Steady screaming, yo, no rocket, polo, we the